Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 60. No surprise, um, because we're really, when you think about the gathering, it's really built around or built upon Isaiah chapter 60, because in that chapter, I believe, God reveals the blueprint, the template, for the times that we're living in. And I know, uh, and Bill Johnson feels that, I know other great men of God feel that, and I certainly do, uh, because I think that this chapter here is about what's happening in the kingdom um, as Babylon falls in the earth. Revelation chapter 18, Babylon has fallen, uh, it's fallen, and um, all the stuff, the merchants, the, the kings of the earth weeping and wailing because their empire has fallen away from them, has, has fallen into the sea of humanity, the economy. They're all weeping and wailing, and we see that right now. The desperate attempts by the globalists, the antichrist powers in the earth, to uh, lock us down through economic oppression and other things. The four horsemen, it's all there. Plague, uh, war, famine, death. The attempt of the enemy, and let me just say this, depopulation is the agenda. Of the enemy, certainly, but of those who are in his thrall, those who are his minions in the earth. But God's purpose in the earth, we can read here in Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Your light has come. Arise. I just want us to focus on that little word, arise. Because what he's telling us here is that we're not in the right position. Amen. If you have, if you're commanded by the Lord to arise, that means you're too low. That means you're too, you're in a position that He doesn't want you to be in, because He tells us to arise. Okay, and we'll just very quickly look at this Isaiah chapter fifty-two, and we'll see here something. I brought this out at an Arise Scotland meeting a while back. In the early days, I believe. And you know, arise Scotland. Arise. Mm -hmm. Scotland needs to arise. Now, I'm not talking about Scotland, Scotland, the, the, the country, or the football team. Or, I'm not talking about that. You know, that sort of a, oh, we are, cause like us. When, when the Lord speaks to arise, he's speaking to his people. And let me just say this to you. God will deal with a nation according to his remnant body, his remnant people in that nation. Not all the body of Christ, because a lot of the body of Christ are sleeping. Which is why they have to awaken and why they have to arise. But God is speaking to those who will hear him and he says arise. And when God speaks to a nation, he's speaking to his remnant in that nation. Because according to the remnant, so shall the nation be. God will speak to earthly leaders. He will speak to kings and those in authority. But most of the time, he will do it through his people in that nation. Because uh, kings, I, I wrote this the other day uh, online, thrones and dominions are uh, what kings rule over. Mountains. The Bible speaks to kingdoms and nations and calls them mountains. And for example, we've got Prince Charles. Prince Charles sits on the mountain, if you like, of Britain. The kingdom, the nation. But a king's job, a national leader's job, is to make sure that evil spirits in high places, principalities, powers that they don't rule over the mountain that they sit on. That's their job. But most of them don't even know about these matters. So God puts in nations his kings and priests, the royal priesthood, because they do know about these things. If we, if we brought King Charles in here and said, do you know that it's your responsibility to keep the nation pure and free from spiritual wickedness in high places and the darkness and depravity that they bring, he may go, what are you talking about? But friends, we know what we're talking about. 
So God makes his people kings and priests in the earth. He, he makes us kings so we can function in that level of authority. And he makes us priests so that we'll go before him on behalf of the people. Which, frankly, a lot of kings and prime ministers won't do. Why? Because they don't, oh, we're not going to do stuff like that. Now, I believe our late queen did stuff like that. But I'm not so sure about Charlie. Which is why we pray for Charles that he be a man of faith, a man of prayer, and a man of the word, and a man who stands in the gap for his people. Now, we're not going to really speak about that today uh, because I want to get on to what the Lord wants to show us today. But Isaiah chapter 52, now watch this, awake, awake. Verse 1, put on your strength, O Zion. There's something wrong when God has to say to you, awake because you're sleeping. There's something wrong when God says to you, arise because you're too low. And he says both things here in this little passage. Awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Sometimes we just have to put our glad rags on. Amen? I, I don't like sometimes the sloppiness that we see in the church. But because we need to be putting on our beautiful garments. Okay? Now, I'm not just talking about the, the way we dress. I'm talking about our, our comportment. We're coming into God's presence. Amen? And, you know, sometimes, uh, I think it was Ellen was saying there about the ceremonies and the services that we've had for our late, late queen. And you notice how they're all dressed regally. Now, you'd expect that from kings. Folks, we are kings. Amen. And I'm not talking so much about our outward garb. I'm talking about what are we clothing this with? Are we clothing this mind with the thoughts and the mindset that we are kings and priests in the earth with a divinely ordained purpose? Or are we just saying, I'm going to church today? Sing a few hymns. Folks, we have, we have to understand what God is saying. He's saying, wake up. Awake. Awake to what? To who you really are. To your true identity. Awake to your identity, which who you are in him. Who you are in the glory. Who you are eternally. Who you are in Christ is far more real and more powerful and more important than who you are on the earth. And if you start to think in line with who you are in Christ, he will lift you. He will lift you from obscurity. He will lift you from purposelessness. He will lift you from futility into purpose. And you start to see, you know, the world might never know me, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Take this thought if you take nothing else. Who you are before the throne of God is who you really are. And you can be somebody that every angel stands back in amazement because of who you are in him. Even if you don't have a pulpit ministry, even if the world never gets to know you because the business you conduct before the throne in heaven is the real business that we're all supposed to be about. You know, they said a bit the other day, David Beck, David Beckham stood 12 hours in a queue to pay respects to Queen Elizabeth. That's great. And he's standing there crying, and that's wonderful. Amen? But David Beckham's a celebrity. Now, you might never be a celebrity, but who you are, you might be a celebrity in heaven. And I'll tell you what will make you a celebrity in heaven. One thing. Prayer. The time you spend fellowshipping with the Lord. And, and the intentionality behind that. Here I am, Father, to do business with you. For my nation. For this city. For this community. That's what gets you. Everybody no notices David Beckham. And you might be standing in the queue behind him. And nobody notices you. But friends, you're noticed in heaven. 
if you're somebody who sets yourself apart for God's purpose. Amen. And celebrity just means, I think it just means uh, light. So, you know, an enlightened one. Well, you're enlightened. Arise, shine, for your light is coming. In other words, arise and shine because you're a celebrity in the throne room. The angels know you. And by the way, if the angels know you, the devils know you. Amen. The kingdom of darkness knows you. Why? Because you shine brighter than many around you. See, the kingdom of darkness hates the light. So the more light that's flowing through you, flowing into you and flowing from you, you become a public enemy number one to the kingdom of darkness. Awake, awake, put on strength. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Now, that had a maybe a different meaning back in the old covenant, but I'll, I'll give you a new covenant interpretation of that. Okay, and here it is. The uncircumcised and the unclean, we would say, are sinners. People out with the covenant. And it says they'll no longer come to you. Well, friends, that's what we want. We want the uncircumcised and the unclean, the sinner man, the sinner woman, the dregs, we would call them, the scum. We want them to come. But the reason we want them to come is because what it's saying here is, well, let me put it this way. They'll only come that way once. Yeah. Amen? They'll only come uncircumcised, unclean. They'll, they'll only be bams as they walk through the door. Amen. They'll only be sinners and filth and unclean and, 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 and the lost when they come through. Because when they go back out and they come back in for the next meeting, they will be cleansed. Amen. They'll no longer be uncircumcised and unclean. That, I believe, is what he's saying. You're no longer going to have to put up with that the majority are all totally uninterested. What he's saying, let me put it in one word, what he said, revival. He said you're not going to be surrounded by sinners in the nation because they're all going to get saved, so there'll not be any more uncircumcised and unclean. And he's saying, awake to that. Because that's the reality. Remember, the disciples, when they came at Jesus at the well, where the women of Samaria, who would have picked her? Who would have picked a woman who's shacking up with a guy and has had umpteen husbands and is the town good time girl? Who would have picked her to start a revival? Would you? Amen. Would we have her at Bible college? Oh, here's a woman here. She's shacking up with a guy. And uh, she's had several husbands. And, you know, she's got a bit of a reputation. Let's have her to Bible college. And let's have her speak next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Pastor, have you lost your mind? Jesus, what's going on? But she went into the city and evangelized. Why? Because exactly. That's why places like jumping jacks. Amen. The dregs, but they're not dregs to the Lord. Oh well, I'm, I, I was a goody two shoes, and I gave my heart to Jesus. Well, that's fine. But you know, those of us who have had colourful lives at some point in our past. We've, we've got a lot to, 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 to... The Bible says he that... If you're forgiven much, you love much. Yes. Amen? Yes. So, so we want those folks to come. Anyway. Um, shake... This is where I want to go to. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. He's talking to God's people here. He's talking to Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck... O captive daughter of Zion. Shake yourself from the dust. Now, if you understood the Hebrew here, well, I'll tell you about that. It says, in the, see, when he says get up from the dust, shake yourself from the dust. When people were in the dust back then, what it meant was they were in mourning. They were on the ground and they were mourning and they were covered in dust. Maybe they're putting dust on them because they were mourning. And he says the days of mourning are ended. 
Shake all that stuff off. Shake your past off. Shake those bad memories off. Shake those guilty, shameful feelings off. Do you know what I did 30 years ago, Pastor? Who cares? Not the Lord. Amen? In other words, don't be mourning. Oh, well, you know, uh, when, when COVID came, our church shut, shut down. Well, get another church. Amen? When this happened, well, you know, I, I was devastated. Well, don't be devastated anymore. Shake yourself from the past, past failures, past situations, circumstances. Oh, you don't know what happened to me, and I don't want to. Amen? Shake all that off. Why? Because you're the redeemed. Because you've been purchased from all of that. Because you've been cleansed. But look what it says. It says, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. We don't under Some verses bring it out, and it's wonderful. Because here's what it means in the Hebrew. It's not just get up and sit in a chair. It literally means arise to an exalted throne or position of authority. That's what it means in Hebrew. Some of the translations, the NIV, I think, the NLT, they bring that out. Sit enthroned. Or rise up and sit on an exalted throne. That's what it means. What he's saying is, I'm taking you from being beggars and paupers and mendicants and, you know, obscure nobodies and making you royalty. That's what this means in Hebrew. That's what happened to every single person in here who gave you the second, the millisecond, you gave your heart to the Lord. You stepped out of being somebody in the dust, a beggar, somebody useless. You stepped, not just into, well, you've now got purpose. You've now got meaning in life. Yeah, you do. But why? Because you stepped into the royal family of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever remember that film, King Ralph? Way back in the 80s. I know you're, some of you are too young for that. <laughs> About the, the guy that was an American... John Goodman was, yeah, and uh, the, 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 the monarch in Eng England died, and they found that he was a nearest relative. He was some American guy, a bit of a slob, a bit of a, a loser. And, um, so they bring him over to England, to Britain, and they try to teach him how to be a king. Amen. And it's a wonderful story because what it's saying is, is that if your mindset is, I'm Joe Nobody, or I'm Jill Nobody, and God's slapping you about the face and saying, no, you are my royal priesthood. You are a king. You're a priest. You're a queen for the ladies, if you like. You are royalty. You have some... Let me ask you, let me ask this. A show of hands. Does anybody here have access <coughs> to King Charles' royal court? Or you had access to Queen Elizabeth's royal court? No. You ever were in the throne room chatting away? No. Every single person here has access to the highest throne room of them. Hallelujah. And not only that, and we're going to see this in a minute, we need to rush this up. But he's saying, rise up. And here's what I want to talk about today. The realm of above. The realm of above. The Lord is saying to you and I today, get above your life right now. Get above your mindsets right now. A mindset is a limiter. Amen? If you have the mindset, I can do all things. All things are possible. I'm in the realm of all possibility. Right? Then you have no limits. But if you have, well, I'm, I'm too old now. Or, I don't have an education, or I need. I, 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 I made bad choices in life, so that's me. I just need to put up with my lot now. Those mindsets are limiters. Amen. And the Lord wants to destroy strongholds in our lives. Let me tell you what a stronghold is. A stronghold is just a limiter. It could be demonic. It's mostly mental or mental and demonic 
Because the demons are saying to you, you're nobody, you can't do this, you're too old, you're too young, you're too useless, you're uneducated, blah, blah, blah. And you need to break those strongholds in your life. Awake! Rise up! Sit on a throne! Learn some stuff! Then you do it. That's it. Or we can say it another way, above. And the Bible tells us, we're going to look at that. Let's turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Arise means change your position. Change your position from where you are right now to a higher level of a, a higher level of living, a higher realm of living. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which, who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you, peace from God our Father. Now look at this. Look at this. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with some stuff here on earth. Oh, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see you. Oh, I've been blessed. With some stuff. Amen. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little bit of silver and a little bit of gold. Oh, I'm blessed. Some, my pastor said hello to me last week. I'm blessed. <laughs> Somebody gave me their old car last week. It's only 20 years old. I'm blessed. <laughs> I remember being blessed with a car like that. <laughs> Amen. Blessing, question mark. See, see what we say is Blessings. Let me tell you, if you're counting your blessings, you're in the wrong business. Because the blessings that come from the Lord are uncountable. Because they're limitless and they are infinite. Every spiritual blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Where? Here on earth, in the heavenly places in Christ. In other words, in the infinite realm of glory. In the realm of no limits, no lack. That's where you're blessed. That's what you're blessed with. Every spiritual blessing. Do you know, let me just, you could spend the rest of your life and never manage to list the blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And what's so wonderful about them, they're in a different place, a different realm. Why do you think he says arise? Why do you think he says sit up on the throne? Why? Because you can't see the blessings when all you're seeing is earth. When all you see is what's around you, you might spot the odd wee blessing, like I said. But if you're in a different realm where the blessings are uncountable, untold, and you can see them, that, that's what he's talking about. Everything in the Christian life is about what you can see. The difference is, where are you looking? Are you looking with the eyes of, you know, you look around? You know, somebody can come along, think about this. I, I know a guy, I know a guy. This guy was an absolute loser in life. And was, was, had a really chronic illness as well. And a nobody. A loser. And I, I, I think he started a business. I think in his bedroom or something like that. Absolute nobody. The guy is now a multi-millionaire. Lives in Dubai. Just a, a, wee, a, wee, a guy you'd walk past. Why? He saw something different. He didn't look at what he saw around him, the limitations. He, he had a different vision. He looked beyond what he could see. 
You can only look beyond what you can see with these eyes, with the eyes of faith. The inner man has eyes that go into the heavenly places in Christ and say blessings. Oh yeah, see some of them, I'll have some of those. That's why he says arise and shine. You start to shine when you arise and see what's there. If you're living life on earth as an earthling. Amen. Let me just tell you this, right? Captain Kirk and Captain Picard, okay, they see a lot more than the guys that stay back on earth. Why? Because they go up. They go above. And the Lord is saying to you and I today, come up above. Come up above what you can see. Come up above the realm you're living in. Come up above the dimensions that you're walking in. Come up above the limits that you've placed and you've allowed the devil to place on your life. Come up to a higher realm. Come up above where all things are possible. Come up above where it's all glory. Come up above where it's all peace. Come up above where there's no lack, no sickness, no poverty, no, de no, no depression. Come up to a higher realm. Verse, uh, verse, let's just go on a bit, he says here in verse um, 20. Christ says, he raised him from the dead. Watch this. He raised Christ from the dead. This is God. And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. He seated him above. Are the heavenly places above this realm? He seated him there. Jesus isn't doing what I'm doing right now, which is pacing up and down and going, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, you see what the devil's doing these days? Oh, my goodness me. Have you seen what's happening on the earth? Father, what are we going to do? Holy Spirit, any ideas? He's not doing that. He's seated. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Why? Because that's the place of indescribable joy. Amen. The joy at his right hand. That there are pleasures forevermore. So it's always joyful. There is infinite supply and infinite blessing at the right hand which in the throne room which is full of joy because he's always laughing because it's full of joy and the joy of the Lord is your strength which means if you want to be strengthened be strengthened from above because that's where the joy is. Seated him at his right hand. Oh, well, that's good for Jesus. But here's me down here in Garngad. Jesus is at the right hand of God, but I'm in Garngad. Amen? And it says, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He seated him Above. Verse 21. Far above. He seated him at his right hand. Far above. The realm of far above is the realm God wants you and I to dwell in. Far above. All principalities and powers. Oh, you did. I'm being attacked by the devil. Oh, uh, I, I, I've got demons attacking me. But Jesus is seated far above. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. Far above every other name. Is cancer a name? Is debt a name? Every name you can name, every condition of humanity which is of darkness, which has come from the fall, if you like, they're all names. And he's above every name. Far above. Oh, you've no idea the demonic powers that have been attacking me. He's far above all of them. And, you know, the way this works is, it's a ranking system. The, the, the higher you go, the more powerful you are. The higher you go, this is just like Britain, the higher you go, the more authority you have. Far above. All of it. Amen? Now, well, that's good for Jesus. But what about me? Amen? 
Well, just go through forward a few verses. <coughs> Verse 5 of chapter 2. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Most Christians stop there. I was dead in my sins and now I'm alive. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives in me. I know that he lives because he lives in me. I'm alive in him now. But you're still on earth. You're still looking around on earth. I'm alive. I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm born again. Amen. Wonderful. But look what he says. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. There's more. Who is it used to say that? The comedian. Oh, there's more. Frank Carson. Was it? One of them. Oh, there's more. Jimmy Cricket. Oh, there's more. There's more. Verse 6 is the more, friends. Look. Raised us up together. What is it Bert said last week? That wonderful word. Together. Not just I'm up there and, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a clergyman. So clergymen, we're all raised. Some churches, that's what you hear, isn't it? Because I'm the clergy, I get the good stuff. And you guys get to pay for it. Amen? No, raised us up together. Amen? I don't care if you're fivefold ministry. The least of saints has this privilege. We're all raised together and we all sit, made us sit together. We're above in heavenly places in Christ. That's shouting down, folks. Is this the Bible? Made us sit together in heavenly places far above. No, it's what he's saying. If we're, he says, made us sit together uh, in Christ Jesus, in heavenly places. Well, folks, if he's far above all principalities and powers, and every name that is named, and we're seated with him, we're far above, aren't we? So the Lord is saying to us today, live from that place, live from above, live and function and take dominion from the realm of above. Now, you know we've been teaching that Arise Scotland so many times, that was the message, wasn't it? Still the message. Hasn't changed. And it'll still be the message until we all get it. And then it'll still be the message just so we can rejoice in it. Because I don't know of a better message. The one who sits above it all in, in, in indescribable bliss and pleasure, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and us. And us. There's a seat. Look, look at all the seats in this room just now. There's a seat for you. And if you came in here and there wasn't a seat, we'd get you a seat. So when you go before the Lord and you become a Christian and you and, and, and you go right into the throne room and there's a seat being made here for you. It's actually been here since before the world began. It's got your name on it. Uh, well, what do I do here? Well, you make decrees. You speak the purpose of God. You, that just releases hundreds of angels and things change on the earth. Get it? But if you go into that seat and start moaning, oh, have you seen this? Oh my goodness, have you seen Oh, you have no idea. Everybody's going to look at you and go, what are you saying? Amen? So you can't say that stuff up there. You have to say it down here. Because you have authority down here, when you say it, you actually bring it to pass. It's just you're not really allowed to say it up there. But if you want to speak God's purpose, then you go, then, then, you're activated on your throne beside Jesus. Amen. When you're saying Jesus stuff, when you're saying the word of God, when you're releasing God's will in the earth, and you're doing that conscious, conscious, conscious that you're saying it from the realm above, heavenly places in Christ, then it has that power that you want it to have. When you're saying, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, Rather than, oh, I think I'm going to die. Turn to Colossians now, chapter 3. 
How are we doing for time? Oh, brilliant. An hour, an hour and a half to go. Colossians chapter 3. Now watch this. Verse 1. If then. If then. There really isn't an if. But he's saying, well, if, if you're raised with Christ. In other words, what he's saying is, because you're raised with Christ. What, what ensues from that? If then you were raised with Christ, watch this. Look around you. See what's going on in the earth. And get depressed. Or if you have the odd good day, say thank you Jesus. That was a good day, but most of my days aren't. Most of my days, days are filled with sorrow and whatever. Amen. You might be going through stuff, but whether you're doing okay, or whether you're all oh, glory, glory, or whether you're absolutely being melted right now, and your heart is breaking, and you, 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 your mind broke all that, you know, ages ago, it doesn't matter if you'll do what he says to do here. Seek those things which are above. You must change your position and you do that by changing what you pursue or what you focus on or what you're consumed by or what your consciousness is flooded with. Seek those things which are above. In other words, get your head out of the game. Don't, and I'm talking about the devil's game. The devil's game is to keep your eyes focused on what's around you and the limits that are on your life. But if you seek those things which are above, you enter an unlimited realm. You enter the realm of infiniteness in terms of supply and power and so on. The realm above is the realm, the heavenly places, the glory realm, all the different names we have for it. Seek those things which are above. Above what? Above everything that is around you right now. And everything that assails you right now. The Bible tells us to be overcomers. How do you overcome? By going above. Amen? What is the most effective way to destroy an enemy? Generally speaking, generally. I'm not talking about different combat uh, arenas. But generally, if you're, if you're warring with, with, with another military... What's the, what's the best way to deal with that? The Air Force. Amen? Go above and destroy from above. Amen? Height has always given people an advantage in, the, in, in military conflicts. In other words, the higher you go, the, the, the harder it is for an enemy to defeat you. If you're on the top of the mountain, there's an army against you in the bottom, and all you have to do is just throw some rocks down or hide behind some and ping off those that are trying to climb the mountain. See, if you're up the mountain, you're relatively safe, aren't you? Because they've got to get to you. It's the same thing with, with, with birds. The eagle dominates the skies because no birds can fly as high. So the eagle just swoops down, does its what it has to do, and then goes back up. Too high for other birds to pursue it. Seek those things which are above. If you're risen with Christ, in other words, what are you doing still loitering around, being an earthling when you're called to a higher realm? Captain Kirk, why are you spending all your time on earth? Your duty is to be in the enterprise, flying that through space above. Amen? Christian, why are you living in earthly realms when there's a higher realm above that you're supposed to function from and deal with all this stuff down here? See, the higher you go, the smaller the stuff looks. You ever been on an aeroplane? And you've seen all, you've seen, um, we were talking about it before the service. Oh, look at that big, huge city. 
Look at all that that massive city with millions living in it. Well, the higher you go, the city becomes a speck. I'm going to tell you to do this. If you're praying for a country or a nation or the world, get yourself a map and put it on your wall. Because it's a whole lot easier to take dominion when it's all there. And you just put your hand on it. Amen? Or you got a globe. Put your hand on the globe. And you, you suddenly feel all powerful because you've got your hand all over the area you're praying for. Amen? But when you're on the ground, you, you're hearing the ground, oh Lord, it's, it's so big, it's so daunting. Now get yourself a globe. Lord, I just put my hand in America right now. In the name of Jesus, I release the will of God over the North American continent. Amen. That's not just playing games with it, folks. That's you real. That's a visual cue and reminder to you that you are already way above America and the nations and the ants. You know, when you got in an airplane and you look down uh, and you're going up through it and, and the people suddenly start looking like ants. It's a whole lot easier to pray. Lord bless them. Amen. But if you're there in your mind and you're above the nations, we're going to look at that. I need to hurry this, sorry. Set your mind, verse 2. Sorry. Seek those things that are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. What he's saying is, the things above are the things that matter. And you're in him, so you're already above it all. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm going to just jump to this, because we need to do this. Okay, there's a few scripts there. We might come back to this, but I just want to get this across to you, because this, this came to me. So Deuteronomy 28, we'll... we'll We'll, we'll maybe close with us, but Deuteronomy 28. Now it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe care for all his commandments, which I command you today. Or, let, let me put this in New Covenant terms. If you walk with God so close, so tight, and be authentic, be real, be it, be somebody who's who's completely sold out to Jesus, and you spend serious time every day with God. That's the new covenant equivalent of what he's saying, yeah, the New Testament. But look what he says will be the reward of this. Or let me just say this to you: if you'll do that, if you walk with God that close, if you'll be the Christian God is calling you to be, you'll change your position. By doing that. He will change your position by doing that. You'll no longer be... See, it's all about perspective and position. What's your perspective right now? Oh, the Antichrist is coming. Oh, the globalists are taking over. Oh, my goodness me, dear Lord Jesus. I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Rapture, Lord. Rapture, rapture, rapture. My bags are packed. I'm raring and ready to go. I know what the Lord's saying. You dummy. Amen. Arise and shine. The time for that's not yet. The time for being a loser has never been. God has not called his people to be losers in history. He's coming for a glorious bride. Without spot and wrinkle. Let me tell you what spots and wrinkles are. People that say, my bags are ready, Lord. Amen. Spots and wrinkles are people who don't, who are not with the program. They're ones that haven't, they're still in the dust. You see, spots and wrinkles come from dust or dirt. Shake the dust off, is what the Lord is saying. Get rid of all that dirt. And even if, you know, the Antichrist comes and the global and all that and the black helicopters and all this stuff and the mark of the beast and all that. Even if that comes, you're going to end up losing glory anyway. Amen. 
But friends, I don't want to get in a blaze of glory. I want Jesus to come back for a glorious church. So he's saying here, look, anyway, where, where was I? <laughs> I love going off on that stuff. Anyway, his commandments which I command you today. In other words, if you get with the program, if you arise, shake off the dust, position yourself, Lord, I'm here. I'm, he says, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Set you means he will firmly ensconce and position you above all nations. And what, it, what that means is, yes, it means that we will see stuff. We will see ourselves in the earth being honoured and favoured and elevated, all of that. But what he's also saying, I believe, is he will position us so that we see ourselves above the nations. You know, it's a whole lot easier to pray for stuff when you're way above it, isn't it? But when the problem is bigger than your faith. Amen? See, Jesus says we'll speak to mountains. Mountains are, are big. The question is, from where do you speak to the mountain? If, you, if, if you're on the earth and the mountain's way above you, it's hard. But if you're in the realm above looking down on the mountain, and the mountain just looks like a wee totally thing. Be removed. And cast into the sea. Because God is, and let me just say this to you before. I go, mountain is just another word for kingdom or nation. He'll set you high above all the mountains of the earth. Okay, mountain is always a metaphor, mostly in scripture, for a, a nation or a kingdom. Mount Edom. Amen. Mount Zion. And then finally, verse 13, look what he says. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You know, we've got that expression, the tail is wagging the dog. Yeah? When the tail is wagging the dog, that means something's wrong. Amen? The tail should not wag the dog or the head. It's the head. You know, I don't, I've used this analogy before, I don't say, I'm going to the loo and leave my head in the seat while I go to the loo. Amen? You don't leave your head behind. Your head takes you wherever you want to go. You can't leave your head behind. And you can't leave your body behind. So, but he says that there's an actual order. There's an actual order, and if you want to call it a supernatural order, which is the people of God are the head in the earth, not the tail. Who, what are we maybe right now? We're maybe the tail, aren't we? we I'll tell you when we were the tail. COVID. You know, at your churches? Yes. You won't praise the Lord? Yes. You sit two metres apart? Good news for some married couples, but not for them girls. <laughs> We'll do whatever we're told to do. Why? Because we're the tail. And it's not about arrogance. It's not about defying the law. It's not about all of that. But folks, you know, we now know this, the futility and stupidity of all of it. And we all know there was an agenda there to shut the mouths of the church that was utilized by people who don't like us. Why? Why did it work? Because we were the tail. You wouldn't have got away with that in previous generations. Not a chance. Why? Because the church was too powerful. The church was the head. You wanted to change things, you had to run it by the church. I remember, I remember elements of that in my, in my young days. But folks, he's saying, I'm going to make the church the head again. The people of God the head. The head, not to, but watch this, this is where I want to go with you shall be above only and not be beneath. Above. Bringing this to a close now. We might come back to this. Above. Living from above. Functioning from above. Reigning from above. Knowing who we are in Christ. Not being arrogant. 
oh well, we're the people of God, we'll, we'll boss people around. Jesus said, no, that's how, the, that's how the nations do it. That's how the, the Gentiles do it, that they lord it over each other. That's not how, we serve. But in the place of before the throne, in the place of prayer, in the place of authority in the throne room of God, we rule and we reign and, and we stomp on the devil. We don't let him stomp on us. We reign from above. We reign over, what do we reign over? We reign over sin. We reign over sickness. We reign over poverty. We reign over darkness. We reign over depression. We reign over uh, tyrannical governments. We reign over it all. Now, we may find ourselves with a battle on our hands at times because we've allowed all that to slip. We have to get it back. People in this country, many of them died because they opposed tyrannical powers. But they got it back. Talking about covenanters. Friends, it's time for you and I to get it back. And, and we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not fighting man. We're fighting principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. But we're not fighting them face to face. We're fighting them because we're far above them. Okay? You know, we talk about generals, field marshals, and so on. They weren't out in the, in the trenches shooting rifles. You know, field marshal McGovern wasn't holding a Tommy gun. What did he have? What was his weapon of choice? A field marshal's baton. You know, one competent field marshal can win a battle easy. The Lord wants us to move from sword, which is spiritual warfare, fighting, to scepter, which is ruling and reigning in heavenly places, seated with him. You know, Jesus won the battle and then was seated. And anything that opposes him now, he doesn't get up to fight it. He sits on that throne and laughs. Why? Because you know, you'll, you imagine you're sitting in the chair, we'll bring this to a close, in the living room, and a wee, you know, 15, 18 months old toddler comes up and starts punching you. You laugh, don't you? Why? Because you're not under threat. You don't need to get up from the couch. You're not in any danger. If you're seated in heavenly places with Christ, nothing can touch you. Nothing can by any means harm you, Jesus said. When you know who you are and you know where you're from, you're living and reigning and functioning and ruling from above. Amen. I believe that's what the Lord wants for us. That's what this gathering that we have is all about, teaching us that place, that position. If we have to reposition, great. If you're already there, great. Teaching us that where we are in here, must line up with where we really are in heavenly realms. It's the mind that has to be renewed to that. You're already there spiritually. Your spirit man is in some mysterious way here on earth in your body, but also seated with Christ. Because just like Christ, you're bi-local, multi-local, whatever. Wherever Christ is, you're there anyway, because you're in him. And he's in you. But it's this that has to catch up with that. What a difference if we all thought and had the mindset, well, I know, I'm, I'm reigning from above. And, and we really knew it. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing of your mind always leads you into the will of God. And the will of God is for every one of us here. We'll close with this. That we know who we are and we know where we are. Our life is hid with Christ in God in heavenly places. Even although we're shuffling around here, there's a, there's, the real part of us is connected to Christ seated at the right hand of God. The Lord bless you folks.